Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of sine x cosine x over sine to the fourth x plus cosine to the fourth x dx. I'm actually going to show you two different ways that you could solve this integral, and both of them just involve simple u substitution trig identities, nothing too fancy schmancy. Okay, so option one. You just have to kind of play around with things so that you can have a nice substitution workout. And I'm noticing here this sine x cosine x, that's kind of my goal to have that get absorbed um, in my u substitution as part of du. So to get the ball rolling, I rewrote the denominator as sine squared squared and cosine squared squared. So this is sine squared x squared and then cosine to the fourth x is cosine squared x squared. And then kind of just play around off to the side and see what you're envisioning for your u sub and if how that would all play out. So I'm thinking, okay, let me let you, what would you need to be so that sine x cosine x dx gets absorbed in, as part of du? Let me let you be sine squared x. Normally we don't add that squared on there, but today we are. So remember that sine of x quantity squared. When you find du, you need to apply the chain rule. So bring the two down front, that's two sine x times derivative of sine x, which is cosine x dx. Ooh, do you see how beautifully this is gonna play out? There's sine x cosine x dx right there. So that means one half du sine x cosine x dx. Fabulous. Okay, and then u is sine squared x, so this is u squared. And then, ooh, what about this cosine squared x? Well, since u is sine squared x, that's a quick fix. I'll just rewrite it as one minus sine squared x quantity squared. So let, let's set up first before we do the u sub. It's not good. You don't want to half u sub, half leave your integral in terms of x. I see sometimes students do that. That's not a well-defined integral. You shouldn't be doing that, okay? Plus, this is now one minus sine squared x squared. Okay. Fabulous. Are we ready? Yes, Professor V. Okay, perfect. So all of this, sine x, cosine x, dx, that's one half du. Let me put the one half outside for right now and then just du up here. Then we have sine squared squared. So that's just going to be u squared. And then be careful, this sine squared x is u. So then we have plus one minus u squared. Are we okay? All right, excellent. Now let's multiply everything out in the denominator. One half du over, this is gonna be u squared plus one minus two u plus u squared. All right, so then this is one half integral du over two u squared minus two u plus one. Does that factor? No. So then I think to myself, I'm going to need to complete the square. But, oh, having a 2u squared, it's not going to make it very nice. If I factor the 2 out, then that'll make that a 1u. I'm going to have fractions when I complete the square. And I'm getting a little stressed. We could do it, but it's just it's not going to be so cute and clean. And then I see, oh my goodness, there's this 2 outside. That's part of the 1 half. If I just distribute it through, I won't have to stress about the fractions. So watch this du over 4u squared minus 4u plus 2. Good. Did you get it right? Yeah, that's a plus 2 right there. And now I'm super excited, you guys, because look, 4u squared minus 4u plus 1, that's a perfect square trinomial. That factors into 2u minus 1 quantity squared. Oh, so then I just need to break up this 2 into 1 plus 1, and then I'm good to go. So let's rewrite things as du over 4u squared minus 4u plus 1 plus 1, and then boom, here's my perfect square trinomial. That was slick. That was slick. If that 1 half wasn't out there, it's fine. We would have completed the square using our normal methods. We just would have had some fractions in there, which is not always the most fun. Okay. From here, depending on where you're at in your integration career, you might be able to just finish off the problem. If you need to do another substitution, feel free. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Let's let t be that variable quantity right there, 2u minus 1. So then dt is 2du 
So one half dt is du. And then notice now we've got here one half integral dt over t squared plus one. Do you recognize the antiderivative now? Oh good. So this is one half tan inverse of t plus c, which is one half tan inverse of 2u minus 1 plus c. I want you to notice something so you could actually start just jumping straight to here in the future, okay? You have this variable quantity squared plus a constant squared. We know that's the form that we have when we are looking at antiderivative that results in tan inverse. Because of this 2, all that happened from the substitution is we pick up a 1 half in the antiderivative. So you, you can bypass all of this and just jump straight to here. Just keep that variable quantity intact, 2u minus 1. That's the argument of arctan. Okay, and then we're not done because remember our original integral was all in terms of x. u is sine squared x. So this is 1 half tan inverse 2 sine squared x minus 1 plus c. Okay, very good. I told you I had another option for you though, right? Okay, so option two. I'll rewrite the original integral. We've got sine x cosine x over sine to the fourth x plus cosine to the fourth x dx. So this one, instead of kind of doing the substitution right away, we're going to use different trig functions, namely tangents and secants. So to get this whole integrand in terms of tangents and secants, I'm going to divide everybody by cosine to the fourth x. Okay, here we go. Sometimes you just got to play around with them, see what works, you know. So here we go. In the numerator, I'm going to have sine x. That cosine x cancels, so it's over cosine cubed x. And then in the denominator, sine to the fourth divided by cosine to the fourth, that's tangent to the fourth x, and then just plus one dx. Now my goal is to have all of the terms be either tangent x's or secant x's. So let's fix that numerator. And notice, if you have sine x over cosine cubed, I can break it up so that I have one cosine underneath the sine, and then the other two underneath the one on their own. So then now hopefully you could see this is gonna be tangent x, and then this is secant squared x. And I'm feeling really good about having my integral all in terms of tangents and secants and whatnot because we know, well, derivative of tangent is secant squared, derivative of secant is secant tangent. So things, things are gonna work out for me. I have a feeling, I just have that feeling. Okay, what sort of u sub should we do? Uh, just like last time, remember how all of this got absorbed and became du? Let's see if we can make that happen again. If I let u be tangent, it won't do the job. It will not. But let me try to let u be, that's right, tangent squared. So let's let u be tangent squared x. When we take the derivative, we have to bring that two down front. You have tan x to the first, and then derivative of tan x, which is secant squared x. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what we have, just without the two. So one half du is tan x, secant squared x dx. Now, don't fret, tangent to the fourth, that's just tan squared x squared. So we should be good to go now. I can rewrite this integral, let's put the one half outside. That whole numerator now is just du with that one half outside. And then the denominator is gonna be u squared plus one. Ah, so in this case we had a lot more prep in the beginning, I mean not a lot more, but at the end, we're just ready to get the antiderivative. So then this is just going to be 1 half tan inverse of u plus c, which is 1 half tan inverse, who was u? Tan squared x plus c. Now you might be saying, Professor V, these answers don't match. We had 2 sine squared x minus 1 with the first result. Well, basically what you would do, there are formulas, angle addition formulas for... They're not angle addition for me, but for arc tangent. And um, if you go ahead and use them, you could show that these are equivalent and off by just some constant of integration, but it, they're not very commonly used. So I would say you're fine. Either answer is fine as long as you show all your work. I think this was more slick, right? I just don't know if how many people this method would first, you know, 
come to or if the first one was more intuitive you let me know i'm sure there's other ways too when you have all these trig functions and whatnot a lot of the time you can play with them a variety of ways which is so beautiful anyways that's it there's going to be an integration beat um at the college where i teach next week i'm very excited so i'm going to attend and then i'll probably come back with fun new integrals to share with you guys so stay tuned with that let me know in the comments how you solve this. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe, please. Please help share my channel so that it can grow and I can reach more students and help them. If you need to review any integration techniques or other topics in calculus, differential equations, even pre-calc, algebra, stats, then check out all my video lectures that are organized into playlists. And follow me on Instagram, TikTok. I think that's everything. Okay, I love you guys so much. I'll be back soon. Bye.